Okay, Larry, tell me about the main design parameters of this, just the main features, like, for example, preheating the fuel, preheating the air, combustion air, things like that. Tell me, tell me some of the main features, just mm -hmm. describing this, this burner, which looks like we've got the, here's a diagram of it. Let's see, on the computer. Is it on the computer, too? Yeah, it's on there. Let's see. Um... Yeah. But tell us, uh, tell us the basic basic design, how, how that works here, with yeah. reference to this graphic that's on the wiki. You can take a look at that, examine it in more detail. Yeah. But So what do we have? So we have the hopper here where the fuel is put in through the lid on the top. It's a double seal um, because where you have gasification, you have pyrolysis of the fuel, and it's uh, different from the normal wood stove that blends all the processes together of uh, gasification, uh, combustion, and heat exchange. So you have the sealed hopper here with the fuel on it, and that can be extended up um, to incorporate as much fuel as you want. Mm -hmm. The um, the fuel drops into with a vertical side, so it can't be hung up. One of the big problems with fuel feeds and gasifiers is that they have a major constriction where the fuel bridges. This one, the, the fuel doesn't bridge because when it gets down to this zone, it's met with uh, super hot air for the gasification reaction, which ignites. Um, a part of the fuel, a small part, that uh, creates the heat, additional heat that um, turns it all into gas. It goes through the coal bed down at the great area here. And that, uh, combined with the steam, uh, which has H2O um, combined with the carbon to create hydrogen and carbon monoxide, both fuels that burn super efficiently. Used to be that they um, they had coal gasification in cities like Seattle that had uh, pipes running all over the place with this gas from coal gasification, which is essentially the same, the producer gas it creates. Um, and they ran all the lighting and engines and stuff like that from it. Uh, biomass creates a much cleaner gas and a much cleaner ash. So the ash then is precipitated down uh, below the grate, which has these conical rungs that uh, keep the, the fuel from falling through, but allow the ash to drop in and the, the gas to go through. So then the gas um, goes up into the combustion shell, which is a an annular ring around this uh, cylindrical configuration that preheats the combustion and the gasification air. The gasification air comes up from the bottom, is heated by the shell surrounding the, uh, the ash pit and the hot gases that are evolved. And then it's further heated by the combustor, the combustion shell, and it goes up and then it starts heating the fuel inside by this ceramic shell that's the hopper shell as well. And that hot air then enters in the gasification reaction. So by having everything heated, you have uh, a very even uh, creation of the gas, very even combustion, and then it goes into the heat exchanger shell, which uh, takes the heat out of it. So you have these three processes, gasification, combustion, heat exchanger, that are separated and controlled separately, so you have maximum control over the whole operation. Tell us about the water and how it balances the combustion, with the water present, how it transfers the heat. So the water, the water is in the, um, the thinner shell, if you can see three shells here of, um, of the heat exchanger, these are are a, a spiral configuration that goes, the gas has to go in this spiral configuration as it goes out. As the gas um, goes by the water heat exchanger shell, 
it heats the water as it cools and drops and ends up going out the bottom of the heat exchanger shell while the water comes in cool at the bottom and it um, goes in the spiral and comes out hot in the middle at the top. Mm -hmm. And I was talking more about the steam. For um, how it, the hot steam helps. Okay, the combustion. so you've got in the gas that is fully burned. Um, this serves two functions. It's either a gasifier or a, uh, or a combustor water heater. And the gasifier will heat the water as well if you don't have combustion. But with the, let's look at the combustion first. So you've got fully combusted gas that um, has essentially carbon dioxide, nitrogen from the air, and water vapor. And the water vapor um, has a tremendous amount of latent heat in it from uh, it turning it from water into steam. Mm -hmm. So you can recuperate that heat of combustion uh, by condensing the steam into water. And the con condensation process not only gives you that, all the heat back that uh, is latent in the water, so you don't have a penalty from burning green wood. Mm -hmm. um, it also scrubs the exhaust so that every fly ash particle becomes a nucleus for condensation of the rain that happens in the bottom of the heat exchanger. It's a super clean heat exchanger, and you get a gas out that has no smell and uh, the condenses clean water out of it. Mm -hmm. And what about in the, the actual pyrolysis part, the role of steam in that part, where it transfers the heat evenly? Yeah. Like the, that part. Um, in the pyrolysis reaction, you have a very complex mixture of gases that, um, with heat uh, become more simplified and with uh, when it goes through broken it, down hmm? I mean broken down yeah broken down into um, smaller uh, molecules and eventually those go through the charcoal bed now the charcoal um, takes the H2O the hydrogen and the oxygen um, and breaks it down into uh, hydrogen and carbon monoxide, which is a fuel. And um, it also, because uh, water, steam is a bipolar molecule that absorbs and radiates uh, radiant energy, whereas um, nitrogen, oxygen, um, hydrogen don't. They don't absorb and radiate um, so you have, with steam, it um, spreads the heat very quickly to all of the gases. And um, then for combustion, it does the same thing and it shortens the flame path. It creates a much cleaner burn. So you actually benefit from having that steam in, in your um, process. And the a steam, fuel. that steam being from combustion or from the moisture in the wood? From both. You've got um, green wood can have 50% of the weight of the wood can be water. And then the dry wood, um, when it burns, can create over 50% water from that combustion process. So you've got a tremendous amount of, of latent heat available from that steam. And it also acts as a catalyst and creates a, a higher quality wood gas. Mm -hmm. So that's that's pretty amazing that you're saying to us that with very green wood you take no penalty on the efficiency of the burn. In fact, the water helps to do the burn when you do this properly as designed right. in this. As long as you have uh, sufficient heat in the process evenly distributed, which the steam contributes to, and you um, and you introduce. Uh, preheated air so that the combustion is always up uh, at a high temperature um, no matter where it's coming from in the system then you have everything is fully burned you get proper mixing and you get uh, excellent uh, efficiencies from this whole system mm 